Hey folks, Moses and Polly here from the High Desert Homestead, and we are participating in the Desert Homesteaders Collab, Collab 2020, along with Simple Life Reclaim, Big Sky at Night, Homestead Witchery, and Arizona Desert Homestead. I think I got everybody in there. If not, you can look in the description below. So, we're going to take and we're going to start with these questions. What's the first question, honey? Um, where about are you located? Don't have to be specific. Okay. Just a location. We are in northern Arizona. That's where our homestead is. Um, our nearest city is really is, is Sanders. It's not really a city. It's more like a little dot on the map. Mm -hmm. uh, they do have a family dollar. Um, there is a grocery store. There is a grocery store. store, yeah. They even have a restaurant. Pizza place. Pizza place. I don't even, I don't know if it's open yet or not. But you can get about anything you need there. They've got fried chicken, and as long as they got fried chicken, I'm good with it. Nearest city. Gallup. Gallup. Gallup, New Mexico is the nearest city. We can be there in about an hour from from our from our homestead. Next question. What explain what a desert climate is? Um, the desert can really range where we're at, and I can only answer for us, it is a uh, semi-arid climate. It, there, we do have a lot of sand. We have, we have clay under our sand. We have a lot of trees. We have pinyons and cedars. You can check out some of our other videos and, and kind of see uh, where we introduce our homestead. But it's, it's not just, there are some out there that are just flat sand. You don't see nothing but sand, no vegetation. But we've got quite a bit of vegetation, not just trees, but we've got sagebrush, we've got manzanita, we've got a lot of different brush and plants on our on our homestead. Why did we choose the desert uh, to homestead in? I'll let you answer that. Polish family's from Arizona, and we lived for 20 years, almost 20 years, in Tennessee, and we got tired of the humidity, to be honest with you. Um, it's just unbearable. And people who live there, I guess, are used to it, and you would think we would have got used to it after almost 20 years, but it's rough. Um, it In the summer, it is rough, and it's wet all the time. I think it rains. I talked to my dad, and he said, it's raining again, and it's like every time I call him, it's raining, so... That's one of the reasons we come to the desert. That and the price of land. Land was very accessible, um, easy to get your hands on. And we like the desert. We like the country out here. It, it gets in your blood. So it's personal preference. Well, uh, next question. What are the pros of homesteading in a desert climate? You don't have to worry about things rotting. <laughs> <laughs> they last longer. The, the, the pros are... It's a little bit more controlled growing environment. You don't have, in, in, in a non-desert climate, you have to worry about weeds and bugs and tons of stuff um, just competing. Um, it's a little bit more controlled growing environment. Can't think of any others, to be honest with you. The cons. The cons is, it's a desert. There, yeah. Water is a challenge. You either have to have rainwater catchment or you have to have, uh, you have to haul it or, or put in a well and wells are expensive. So those are all cons. If you have tons of money, you can, you can do it really easy. Um, but if you don't have tons of money, you have to work at it. You have to take and haul water. You have to take and do rainwater catchment. Everything has to have rainwater catchment on it. Your house, your shed, your garage, your, your outhouse your dog house, your chicken house, everything has to have a rainwater catchment, gutters and tanks. What's the next question? What is the biggest city we have ever lived in? Salt Lake City. Salt Lake City. Utah. Utah. And would we ever go back to living in that city? If the golden opportunity was laid before us. I, no, I, I, I don't think so. I, be honest, I, I love people, okay? I do. I love people. But I am not a crowd person, to be honest with you. 
I like I like to be around people, but then I like when, I like my solitude. I like to be by myself. Uh, when I'm when I am by myself with my family, I like to be by myself. I don't like the neighbors seeing everything I do. What is or was your day job? City or here? I've held a lot of jobs. It would take me all day to list all the jobs I had. I've been a security officer, a carpenter. We had we owned our own agricultural installation company or ag agricultural construction company. She's for the most of the part where we've been married, she's worked with me. So we pretty much had the same job except for when I was doing security, but I was always training horses. That's not really a good question for me because I do whatever it takes to get the goat. What's the next question? Uh, how did you get into the homesteading lifestyle? We, uh, we've always kind of, I don't, what not a lifestyle for us. Lifestyle, it was, it was just pretty much how we were. Yeah. We've always grown, tried to grow our own food, mm -hmm. um, prep slash homestead slash farm slash redneck hillbilly. <laughs> Every hillbilly I know of is a is a homesteader. I mean, we raise our own meat. Um, we've always kind of done that, but we've never done it off grid as much. We did it back about. Well, it's been a long time ago. We lived off grid and we had sheep and hogs and chickens and we didn't grow a whole lot. Um, we tried. But what got us into it, we've always kind of been that way ever since we've been married. When, when we got married, I had cows and hogs and chickens and goats and we had I had a little bit of everything when, when we got married. is the biggest predator in your area? Sasquatch. <laughs> Bigfoot. Mm -hmm. I, I think probably a mountain lion. I have seen mountain lion tracks on our homestead. So probably a mountain lion. I haven't seen any bear tracks and I don't think we're near enough water. Um, bears don't range that far. So I'd probably say it's probably a uh, mountain lion. think of the desert they think of extreme heat how do you manage that during the hot months uh, well on the desert it gets cool at night you'll have very few nights where it doesn't cool back down july august you're going to have nights where it stays warm kind of all night long but for the most part during the day it's going to be hot but at night it's going to be cool you can do off-grid uh, water coolers, swamp cool, what we call swamp coolers. You can you can run those off-grid on a solar panel. So it's not as bad as people make it out to be. Um, yeah, we had some hundred degree days, but honestly, in the desert, if you're in the shade, it's cool. It doesn't really get that it hot. Does. It does. You can cool, sit down in the shade and cool down. In Tennessee, oh, you can't no. do that. No. You sit in the shade, you're still gonna sweat. Yeah. Sweat 24-7. Okay, are you off-grid completely or partially, and why? We will be off-grid completely. Um, once we get... Once we get down there. Right now, we're, we're in a transition period. We are living in an RV park three hours from our homestead, and we're building our homestead as we go. So we will, when we eventually move down there we don't have the option of having electricity we don't have the option of being on grid no. where we're at there is no on grid uh, we're going to be off grid totally so uh why we have no other option <laughs> and it, even if we did i don't think i would because i just don't I, I like the idea of being able to control our energy our energy intake and not be tied to a bill yes Ready? Yep. In your climate, are you able to forage and survive off the land? Survive? 
Survive off the land. You can survive anywhere if you're tough enough. <laughs> um, you can. You you can hunt. You can fish. On our homestead, you have you have to use public lands. I mean, and you have to have a hunting license and you have to have a fishing license. But you know, yeah, you sh you see all these shows where these guys are hunting and fishing and they're 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 living a subsistence based lifestyle. They're not doing it right on their homestead. I'm just telling you, they're going out on the public lands. They're going places where they can hunt big game, where they and can get stuff. You have to go off the property to do that. Yeah, you have to. Um, you know, unless you're growing it and raising it right there on the property, um, our ten acres would would not sustain a large, um, a large herd of animals like a whole herd of goats. Mm -hmm. it, it would sustain. We would have to use. You know, we would have to have hay or public lands. Thank goodness for us, we have free range where we're at. We can pretty much take and turn our animals loose as long as we can get them up. Um, and they can forage around our homestead. Um, what livestock animals do you think thrive best in the desert and why? Take it away. Sheep. Goats. Mohair goats. Um, chicken. Chickens do all right on a on a desert homestead. Um, you have to protect them. Owls, foxes, and bobcats will get them. But if you've got a, a covered, you have to cover your chicken, chicken coop, coop. Yes. So that birds can't fly in there and mm -hmm. grab your chickens. What else? You can raise hogs, but you have to have a lot of shade for them. I learned that the hard way. I had a hog get sunburned. You have to have a lot of shade for the hog, and, and you they do use a lot of water. Um, they use a lot of water. Uh, so you, you have to be prepared for that if you get into hogs. Uh, Katata sheep, polypay sheep do really well. Mohair goats, um, all those type of hair sheep and hair goats do really well. That's what most, uh, a lot of uh, people on the res out here, they just raise a lot of sheep or goats. Yeah. They do. So I guess it's a good livestock to raise out here. Uh, what a livestock animals do you think? Oh, I already answered the question. Will fail, it says. What live animals do you think will fail in the oh, desert? Oh, will fail in the desert. Okay. And why? I, it depends upon your climate. If you're on the flat desert in southern Arizona, it there's a lot of things that could fail but where we're at if you've got the adequate shelter if you've got the adequate means to support them i don't think anything will fail you can have a cow or sheep or goats or oh. hogs or whatever yeah. uh what nutrients do you Sandstorm. Oh my God, sand blows too. Wind. Wind is unbearable. Yeah. That's about it. Hailstorms. Hailstorms. They will be. They, I've, I've seen some pretty good golf ball size hail. So hailstorms. Yeah. There are uh, flash floods. Yeah. Okay. Okay, uh, if you choose anywhere to homestead, would you still choose the desert? Why or why not? Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. We would choose the desert hands down. Mm -hmm. um, we've lived a lot of places and we've been even more places. And I would choose the desert over, over any place. Yes. Um, it's... For me, I, it has a whole lot to do with growing up reading Louis Lemoore's, I guess. Louis Lemoore's and, and Westerns. And, you know, when you watch those, you watch old John Wayne movies. I don't know, I got addicted early on and then I got to spend part of my life out here. I'd probably say about half and half. I spend about half my life in Tennessee and half my life here. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Um, I always wanted to come back here. Yeah. 
even when we lived in Tennessee and, and it just wasn't time. It wasn't time uh, spiritually. It wasn't the Lord just wouldn't let us come back. And now we're here and I just don't want to live anywhere else. Yeah, I grew up in Arizona, so I always want to move back. Yep. So we're desert dwellers. Yeah. Desert life, baby. <laughs> we want to thank y'all for stopping by. We may have run a little bit long, um, but we appreciate you guys. Make sure to check out the other videos from Simple Life Reclaimed and some of the other channels I'm going to list in the description below. And this has been your Desert Homesteaders Collab 2020. Thank y'all. We'll see you down the road.